Hello, my name is Cesare Romano. I'm professor of international law at Loyola Law School in Los Angeles. I'm here to talk to you today about the Inter-American Court of Human Rights Project, a project of the law school's uh, International and Comparative Law Review. The Inter-American Court of Human Rights is the main judicial organ of the Organization of American States, which is a continent-wide organization gathering together all states of the Americas. The jurisdiction of the court is to decide on human rights violations, human rights that are protected in the American Convention of Human Rights, that have been committed by member states. The cases are brought before the Inter-American Court of Human Rights by another organ of the Organization of American States, which is called the Inter-American Commission of Human Rights. We decided to create the Inter-American Court of Human Rights project because we noted that decisions of the Inter-American Court are hard to find. On the website of the court itself, you can find the text of the whole decision, but you cannot find a well-done, concise summary of the decision. Decisions usually are 200 pages in length, and the idea was first to provide a set of well-done, well-written summaries of maximum 15 pages, and second, to distill all the information that we gather through the process of writing summaries to create a database that can enable researchers of all kinds, from legal scholars to political scientists, to do research and writing over the, on the court. A second reason to do it is that I noticed that students had a limited chance of getting their writing honed and improve it and to get it published. Um, Students participating in the project get assigned to cases. Um, on average, each has three summaries to do every year. And this gives them plenty of opportunity to write, to obtain feedback on their writing, and eventually to get published and obtain credit for that. The third reason we decided to do that is that um, Los Angeles is um, in close proximity to Central America. Um, it's a perfect staging point uh, to observe the work of the Inter-American Court of Human Rights. Um, there is a large number of Spanish-speaking people in our community, and this helps since that very often the decisions of the Inter-American Court of Human Rights are released first in Spanish. Well, first of all, our practitioners um, people who actually uh, litigate cases before the Inter-American Court or bring them before the Inter-American Commission. Um, our summaries uh, make these decisions easily accessible. They contain all relevant information uh, from the description of the facts to the holding of the decision uh, that can help practitioners um, build their own arguments. The second intended audience of our project are scholars of all kinds, um, legal scholars, political scientists, specialists of international relations. Um, the website contains a trove of information um, that has been um, broken down and coded in various ways. And people who are interested in the work of the Inter-American Court of Human Rights can use the data that we have gathered to inform their writing and their research and make all kinds of observations. Well, the first is the summaries themselves. Um, the summaries are 15 page long on average and contain all essential information regarding each case that has been decided by the Inter-American Court of Human Rights. The second feature of the project is the database. As the student summarizes the decisions of the Inter-American Court of Human Rights, they gather data, then they decode, and this is fed into a database that is searchable. We track all kinds of information, from the amounts that has been um, awarded to the victims in the decision, to the articles that have been violated, those that have been invoked as being violated, and those that eventually have been found to be violated. The third feature of the project is that for every country we have produced a timeline and a background 
that summarizes all historical, political, social, economic um, aspects of the given country and puts each and every decision in the context of the larger uh, history. For every country, we also provide information about state of ratification, when the country in question has acceded to the Inter-American, uh, has accepted the jurisdiction of the Inter-American Court of Human Rights, when it acceded to the American Convention of Human Rights, whether any reservations has been made, and a short summary of every decision, including provisional um, major orders that have been passed by the Inter-American Court of Human Rights in regard to that country. Well, two things. Uh, the first of all is that it provides them a, an opportunity uh, to improve their writing. It's a writing intensive process. Every student does three summaries every year and uh, it goes through multiple cycles of revision and this gives them an opportunity to improve their writing skills. The second advantage is that students participating in the process have guaranteed uh, publication of their summary and publication is attributed to them, of course, as, uh, together with the other members of the team. Um, so they can get visibility, which is always um, something good for their curriculum. The project started in 2011, and we are right now in its seventh year. Um, over the past seven years, uh, we have caught up with the court. Right now, we are current. We have summarized all previous decisions of the Inter-American Court of Human Rights. And going forward, the main challenge is going to be to remain current, um, to, this, to summarize decisions as they are issued, and also to upkeep our database. Uh, going forward, we will probably also try to find new ways of organizing the data, uh, maybe to code different information in these decisions, and to this end, we will welcome the input from all users uh, of our database on in what directions and how we should develop our project.